Hello there Geminis, welcome to your reading. So um, when I started out this reading, I saw two things and let me just relay them uh, before I forget. So first of all, I see this scene in the countryside. There's like a town far away and there are dark clouds hanging over the town. It looks like it was going to, it's going to start pouring any minute now. And then this, there's this hill and there are a lot of uh, men riding on horseback, probably like five or six of them. And they're heading towards that town. And uh, I don't know if, um, they're trying to, you know, make it there before it starts pouring or if they're like a, a band of just um, riders who have news information and they're headed towards that town to possibly talk to a mayor or higher up or somebody who is prominent, you know, who has a prominent position in that town. And anyways, so they're a band of them is riding. They're going really, really fast. They're kicking up a cloud of dust. So I hear hoof beats. I hear a lot of activities and I just hear um, a lot of noise, a lot of um, calamity, but not in a bad way. Just a lot of noise associated with this, uh, this group of people. Okay. And then the second scene that I saw was, uh, I see this, this man and this woman, they, they're um, probably like in their 50s and they're in the parlor and they're having like a very, very serious conversation. Um, it doesn't indicate to me bad news, but they're just very, very immersed in a conversation amongst uh, themselves. And there's a kitchen door and it's kind of swinging back and forth. And I have uh, two children in the kitchen they're kind of peeping through the holes through the door and they're just like what's going on what's going on so you know the the children are very very curious about what's happening what are the adults talking about and so so that's um that's where the the scene ends okay so needless to say we are headed already in the mercury retrograde time frame and the mercury retrograde time frame is right for um, miscommunications, okay? And I feel like, you know, the the riders on the horseback and the people speaking in the parlor, there is a lot of communication happening all around, all the signs, but in particular for you guys. And one of the things that we need to be very careful about is um, erring on the side of over explaining rather than under explaining. We feel like we're communicating a specific way, but then the audience might not understand what we're saying. And then a lot of the times too, um, we rely on the fact that, you know, oh, this is common knowledge. Everybody knows it is this way. And other people might not approach the situation from your same vantage point. And so it's really important to like lay the foundation for everything that we need to talk about. Um, establish that baseline so everyone is on the same page before we can delve deeper and deeper and deeper into a specific topic. And it's also a really, really good time overall to for one-on-one -on -one interpersonal types of communication, okay? Um, I do see potential for ego flare-ups. So if you're, and like, you know, group mentality, mob mentality, that's what I'm, I'm feeling with the riders on horseback. And what I mean by that is um, a lot of the times communication or decisions made as a group um, might not be the same types of communication or um, decisions that would be reach if it was just a one-on-one -on -one interaction, okay? Group think very, differs greatly from individual um, opinions. And so we want to be a little bit careful that when we are discussing something very, very important, that we are, we reserve the space in order to elicit meaningful information from everybody that's involved, okay? I almost see like, um, I almost feel like there is a, you know, like a crime scene where there is a car accident, right? And then um, the investigators are coming in, they're looking at the evidence, and then they're asking all the witnesses. And then if you don't single out or isolate each witness, 
they might corroborate a story and then they might also you know the human um, memory is also very very unreliable so there might be memory gaps and then somebody inadvertently says oh yeah it was a, a yellow truck and then this person fills it in in their own memory bank that it's a yellow truck rather than the reality of what they saw in the past so I'm seeing this energy here about a lot of communication information coming your way and you might have to go through the task of separating fact from fiction okay you might need to you know once again look at the concrete evidence rather than the um, flurry of activities commotion the noise that might be seen often as a red herring to distract you from the truth or to distract people from the truth so I feel like there's a lot of things here to consider as it relates to communication between you and the masses you and other people and I also feel you know that that scene with the man and the woman talking that is your confidant. That is somebody that you really, really, really trust. I mean, um, you're sharing some, some, you know, um, private information with this person. And I also feel like you are bouncing ideas off them and you're, you're, you're trying to, you definitely are creating that sacred space so that you can get their opinion on a specific topic away from the prying eyes of the children or people who might not be experts in that field to elicit information from on that specific topic. So I feel like, you know, the a lot of uh, miscommunication issues can be mitigated when we pull people away from their element, from their group think and isolate them in order to get their truthful, honest, unfiltered um, opinion, okay? So let me see what else is in store for you here. So let me just say this, okay? There's a lot of people in your environment who are willing to help. So for those of you who are dealing with this energy, where there's a lot of tasks that needs your attention, a lot of things that you have to take care of, responsibilities, the, the minutia of the day, you know, going through the motions, um, grocery store, um, washing the dishes, house chores, and then on top of that, the work that you are expected to, to complete. So I, I do feel like the later part of this um, month is a lot more about revisiting things, redoing things. And if you are in a position where you're overseeing the work that other people are doing, I feel like you try delegating. And for whatever reason, the other people might not do things properly and they might not do things to your liking or they might be a little bit sloppy when it comes to the work that they're doing and then it ends up on your desk and you have to be the one to kind of sift through it and figure out where they went wrong so that you can give them feedback okay so i do feel it's going to be a, a very busy latter part of march and as a result of it you know you have to keep your wits about you you have to stay sharp and you have to you know um i feel like be very 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 careful about the the information that comes across your desk and especially assess a situation very objectively so taking the extra time in order to arrive at the best solution or the best decision that is very crucial and what i'm seeing is um there's a lot of people in your environment there are a lot of people that are capable that are willing to help that you can delegate responsibilities to and it's showing up here with the six of pentacles this is a generosity and kindness you know um delegating as well you know giving pieces to other people and so 
there will be helpers coming out of the woodwork in order to assist you, in order to, um, for you to bounce ideas off, off of, in order to give you that clarity of mind and, and clear insight as to what the best optimal decision is going to be. So I feel like turn to your trusted confidant, turn to the people that you highly trust when it comes to their skills and their capabilities, okay? Uh, you're not alone in all of this. And I feel like you, you need a sounding board. You need somebody to give you possibly an objective opinion or, you know, a, a different perspective so that you can solve problems, so that you can arrive at a better, I feel, conclusion towards a, a situation. Okay, so what I have here is um, the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is rest and relaxation. Okay, so there's a lot that will um, require your responsibilities um, that, that will require. There are a lot of responsibilities that will require your attention. Excuse me. And so I see like waves. Okay, so a lot of things come at once. And then there's a little bit of a calm, like a lull for a few days where you can kind of relax. So this ebb and flow between lots of work as well as rest and restoration in between. And so I see this, you know, the, the waves of people, okay? Things come in, you have to tend to them, and there, there's a lull, and then the next batch of major, major things come in, you have to attend to, and then there's a lull. So it's going to come in waves. And as a result of it, whenever you have downtime, take the time to do whatever you need to do. Whenever there's, you know, um, a little bit of a lull, take the vacation. Whenever there's a little bit of... Um, uh, whenever you see the energy start picking up and I feel like you're gonna sense it intuitively you know a few days before it comes whenever you anticipate that next wave of energy or that next wave of big responsibilities coming in you need to um, really trust it and honor it and reserve the time and the emotional and mental space in order to take care of these things okay so I feel like it's going to be it's going to require that you are flexible and you guys are immutable signs so you're going to be super flexible it's going to require that you are fast on your toes and that you trust you, that you really really trust that this too shall end so when that big wave of responsibilities come in take care of it and just know that you know once it's done it's going to be done and then you're going to have a little bit of um r and r at the end of it okay um the other thing i'm seeing here there's a situation that is potentially um giving you anxiety or creating some type of um what i'm seeing here is well let me show you the cards Nine of Swords, Restless Night, a little bit of guilt and a little bit of regret, okay? Nine of Swords. It's linked up here with the Devil. And the Devil is a source of, um, it's a situation. I, I don't see toxicity, not in this context, because the surrounding cards are very, very, very good. I feel like there's somebody that you're giving energy to, okay? Like, I almost feel like you're helping them grow. You're helping them find their way. You're giving them a lot of, uh, there's a lot of communication and contact because this Nine of Swords indicates that. There's potentially a lot of attraction between the two of you too. Um, I have Capricorn energy and I, then I have um, Taurus energy. So Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. So earth signs and then I also have an air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra and Gemini also comes out very strongly so I feel like there is a a very very strong attraction there is also some type of guilt associated with this interaction between you and this person um, I also feel like the communication itself on the surface it can be a little bit snippy, you know, bantering back and forth, criticism and things like that. And I feel almost like this uh, nagging, nagging, nagging type of energy uh, exchange between you and this person. But then I also feel like the energy itself is very exalted, okay? Because with the six of coins, it indicates generosity. It indicates that two people who are willing to kind of like benefit from from the interaction, from the exchange. And I also feel like, you know, if you are thinking about a course of action and you're coming to somebody to ask for their advice, they're not going to tell you what 
you know they're they're not like a yes man they're not going to tell you what they think you want to hear they're going to be very very brutally honest so i feel like you have somebody in your miss who's totally honest whose brutal honesty um can sometimes be a little bit too much but you know this about them and as a result of it you seek them out not because they're a yes man you seek them out because you you trust their their guidance you you trust their counsel and i feel as a result of it they guide you keep you on the straight and narrow and they provide the insights that will allow you to make the best decision so the interaction between the two of you is not always smooth sailing there's like I, i'm seeing like you know the the, the spurts here like um communication comes in spurts okay so it, it comes in heavily and then it, it uh, subsides and then it comes in heavily again but then i also feel for some of you you're dealing with some internal guilt i feel like there's a situation here that you are trying to snip your way out of you're trying to move forward or move away from it with this devil energy he's got like a little pair a uh, small pair of scissors he wants to cut his way out. He doesn't want to be controlled. He doesn't want to work under anybody else's thumbs. Um, so I'm seeing this energy about somebody being wrapped around somebody's thumbs and they're revolting or not wanting to be in control anymore, wanting to be in control of their own life, wanting to make a decision and wanting to do the right thing and wanting to do, wanting to, I'm seeing as well free up some resources so that you can give it to people who really really need it okay um, so I don't know in what capacity uh, you're working at or I don't know if this is even in a, um, a personal like um, in a personal capacity where you feel like there is a situation here you might be fi financially constrained and forced to do things a specific way when you feel like the funds are better allocated towards a specific avenue and i feel like you're going to be able to cut away the restrictions to be able to move the funds around in order to do other things that you feel would have a better outcome okay so for those of you who are like in uh, contract monitor positions and for those of you who are overseeing other people's money or even sorting out your financial situation there's going to be some type of reprieve a way to allow you to shift to to smooth things out and to allow you to shift funds around so that it meets your own individual needs okay or if you're managing other people's funds you're able to find loopholes in order to be able to siphon the funds off and into a different avenue that will be really beneficial for people um, i feel like you've been conflicted with a major choice here a major decision um mulling it over back and forth wanting to make this decision on your own but there have been so many people just chiming in okay so those messengers on horseback i feel like in a way um each person comes with their own agenda or their own information and they want you to act based on the information that they give you so it's not like a band of people bandwagoning i don't see that I feel like each of them feel like their perspective or the information they're about to give is just as important as the next person. And they want you to make a decision based on what they're, the information they're giving you. So in a way, you're kind of um, roped around or constrained by other people. And you might have been in this state for a while. I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, for a long while. And it's gotten to the point where you might feel like you're not free to act, okay? You're tethered. And it's gotten to the point where you're dealing with people who might be, you know, snippy or um, infringing or asking you like, you know, why aren't you making a decision? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you doing what I tell you? And then I feel there is definitely a period here where you're trying to break away, okay? 
um, I do see this energy as something that has always been in your environment and you're coming to the realization, you know, during this Mercury retrograde, when we start Mercury retrograde is um, a time when, you know, your ruling planet Mercury is not visible. It's, um, it's taking a wacky turn and it's going in reverse position. As a result of it going reverse, we have to rely a lot on things that are under the surface, our intuition. And we have to make decisions and analyze situation and feel kind of feel things out based on that space. And it's not a comfortable realm for an air sign like yourself to operate under. But what you're going to start to see as we head out of it by the end of this month, moving into April, is that you're being guided to really, really trust your intuition. Trust who's got your best interests at heart. And especially trust that you need to make decisions um, and not be coerced, not ban bandwagoning, not be pressured into a specific course of action because people have their own agendas, okay? So I feel like there might be a situation where you have a lot of work piled on and you're trying to just move the work away from your desk or away from your vicinity and you might not be looking at the situation objectively so it's really really important to take a second glance okay and if your intuition is telling you there's something here that I need to dig a little bit further by all means use up the extra time in order to do that because I feel like you know um, things that are not done right the first time they're going to be returned to be revisited so I, I, I do see this energy here and that might be the area that's creating more work for you. So if, if, if it was done the right way the first time, the work wouldn't pile up to begin with, okay? Um, so what I'm seeing here, we have here the Two of Wands. This is um, somewhat of a long distance relationship, okay? Um, communication or being in a relationship or interacting with a person that is uh, quite far away from you. And what I have here is I feel like, you know, you're dealing with someone who's very, very busy. You yourself are very, very busy. And so communication between the two of you is very, very sporadic. I also see you contemplating a trip, contemplating um, going to see a person. I see you looking at the person, contemplating, like wanting to, to, to do it, wanting to move forward, wanting to kind of um, dive in and like I mentioned with the beginning of the month the, the March reading it's all about testing the waters before you jump right in so I feel like many of you are trepidatious like hesitant about a specific plan about moving forward so you're just on this hill scoping out scouting the territory looking at a situation analyze the situation but not really making any type of a gesture steps towards something so I feel like something really demands your attention or um, there's somebody in the picture that is at a distance from you. They're incredibly busy. This is showing up as somebody that, you know, you might have a tremendous amount of feelings for. We have the lovers card. This is a really good card uh, when it comes to relationship because it indicates the polarity, okay? The, the masculine, feminine energies between people and you don't even have to be in you know heterosexual relationships to experience this it basically means it's a complementary relationship between two people one person has something that the other person is lacking it doesn't indicate compatibility to begin with but it indicates a perspective change that the other person is give, bringing into your life they're opening up a sense of awareness you likewise are bringing into the fold in this union um, some type of a paradigm shift or s helping them see a situation from a different vantage point. So in a way, the two of you really complete each other or there's just great complementarity between the two of you. And as a result of it, I feel like, you know, the I, I'm seeing some guilt here, okay? So I, I don't know why that's coming up. Um, I don't know if they have been, like the, the balance, the give and take, um, might also be a little bit off kilter in some capacity. I feel like they might have been putting in a lot of the effort, a lot of the work, 
and you're feeling a little bit guilty that they're shouldering the responsibilities, you want to reciprocate, but at the same time, I see you being very busy, Gemini, and I see you um, hesitant about, you know, about contributing. And with this Knight of Coins and the Two of Wands, it's almost like two options, you know, which way do I go? And it's almost like which way will yield the more tangible results? Okay, because the Knight of Pentacles is an earth energy. They're very practical, very earthy, very much about long-term longevity, long-term results, long-term sustaining power. So you might be dealing with somebody that you feel is a little bit more fickle and you're not really trusting whether or not to move uh, towards them because of their fickleness or because of your perception of their fickleness but i definitely feel there's a lot more beneath the surface and so i feel like you know it's not so much about trusting what's being said it's more about gauging your emotional responses in a situation because that is what's really going to guide you towards making the right assessment and the right decision okay drown out the noise and the spectacle and the red herring you really really need to kind of um pull back and and really look at your really trust your gut instincts when it comes to people you guys are a really good judge of character anyways really trust that inner voice to steer you in the right direction with the right people okay um so i have an air sign here so aquarius gemini and libra and I feel like this person um, might be very pivotal uh, in your life. So this is someone who's very intelligent, okay? They're, they're, they, they've already mastered the mind, okay? So they're kind of like the what I call the tactician. They come up with a game plan. They come up with a strategy. They come up with like very ingenious ways of doing. And it's very unprecedented. So this is somebody who's already mastered the, me the realm of um, mental clarity. Their sword energies usually cuts through the confusion. They cut through the BS. They, they're very succinct communicator. Um, and I, I also feel like this bird with the little branch on his um, beak, it's communication, a peace offering. And especially some type of a communication between two people where it could be a little bit more on the surface okay but I feel like there's a playful energy between you and and this person and then I also feel as well there's vast distances um, like immense distance and um, it's really really hard for this person to open up emotionally so if they have in whatever capacity open up to you emotionally it's going to feel you have to trust what they tell you at face value okay because with this energy they're all about speaking the truth and they're all about conveying information in a very straightforward um, linear way so that no one is going to be confused when they deliver a message so I definitely feel like you just need to kind of trust this at face value um, so I'm seeing this person might be somewhat instrumental in trying to help you with something or trying to give you clarity on a situation and if you are in a capacity where you don't know where to turn this could be somebody who could be your best ally okay um, so for the relationships, I feel, you know, Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, as well as uh, Air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And then I'm also seeing like a, a major trip that's taken, somebody leaving the picture, taking a trip out of like no longer in your physical vicinity. And I feel like it's going to, it might create more work for you as a result of it so it could be a partner that's leaving the picture it could be like a co-worker a colleague and as a result of it you might see the work dynamics change a little bit like i said you know the waves waves of responsibility coming in there's a lull and then another wave coming in so plan your time um just be very flexible i feel you know, if you come in with an agenda, like Monday, I'm going to get this done. I, I feel like your um, personal schedule or your agenda is going to fly out the window the, the first week, mainly because 
things come in waves and you just have to anticipate and you just have to roll with the tides okay um yeah so the the whole co the i guess that the theme here would be rolling with the tides being flexible being changeable being able to be adaptable as well and i i feel as well there's somebody here that's really um i'm seeing like the the crown chakra very highly activated so you're making a decision it, it's almost like whatever trouble whatever um blockages or whatever if you felt like you've you've been hitting a brick wall and not be able to break free or not be able to find a solution out of a predicament you're going to be getting some type of downloads that will allow you to and i feel you're, you're getting downloads or you're consulting somebody or you're asking for advice and you're getting some type of spiritual advice this is spiritual ascension okay in order to help you navigate the energies for this month and it could be a, another person even and the gemini energy comes out strongly as well as uh, capricorn it could be another person that's like behaving as a um behaving as a, a counselor an advisor or somebody to really help you look at a situation succinctly so that you can you know make the best decision okay so let me just see here what is this devil energy indicating okay so we have page of swords news communication we have the emperor in the reverse there's somebody that is an authority figure in your life authority figures could be you know um people in the workplace somebody that we have to obey okay tradition as well rules regulations traditions um a, a physical authority figure in the workplace that we have to obey or a person in our personal life that we feel we have to obey mom dad institutions of family marriage whatever it is for you and i feel like it's at a point where the other person you feel might be a little bit self-serving okay they're not operating at their best or they're doing things in a way that is very self-serving so the emperor rules empires he's supposed to make decisions that benefits everybody as a whole. When it's in the reverse, this could be somebody who's quite controlling, somebody who wants things their way, somebody who could retaliate, or somebody that wants, they want what they want. And even if they are confronted with the fact that their decisions are not right, they stubbornly cling on to power. And I feel like there's somebody like this in your life that that has a, um, a lot of like a hold on you. They have a lot of influence or they have a lot of power over you and you're going to be able to cut them free. OK. This is a much needed energy of somebody swooping in and freeing this little puppet from a toxic situation okay somebody is coming in to be able to free you from this I feel like for many of you you might have been kept under the, the 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 fingertips of this person and you don't realize your true power you don't realize your own capability uh, of freeing yourself from this space and then for others I feel like you have somebody here possibly an air sign Aquarius Gemini Libra that is instrumental giving you information, giving you insights, possibly even physically coming into, like their presence in your life is freeing you, liberating you from this space that you've been stuck in for quite some time. So they're, they're giving you like a, a different perspective or they're physically going to help you move away from it, okay? So we have a lot of resolutions, things coming, lots of information, you know, it's like that when those riders come in they kick up a dust cloud okay but the rains will come the rains will batter on the ground and everything will be packed into place and the dust storm will clear up and so what i feel is it might be a little bit explosive just a lot of things happening all at once 
lots of information. I almost feel like information overload and we have to act on the information. But you already know what the right thing to do is, okay? I feel like you need to really trust your intuition and you need to sit with it, mull it over, marinate over decisions overnight if you need to before you act, okay? I'm going to leave it at that. I wish you all the best, okay? Take care of yourself. And um, for those who are interested in reading, um, I've included a link in the description box below to a psychic. She's based out of California. She is phenomenal. I've used her services in the past and she has been, she's very good at her work. Um, so I've recommended family and friends to her if you're interested in getting a reading for yourself or if you know somebody who is in need of spiritual guidance, I highly recommend that you seek her counsel. Um, once again, the link is in the description box below. I wish you all the best. Take care and I'll talk to you in about two weeks.